Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Philippe Paquette, and you are at How to Know Bible Prophecy number 10. Um, I have a sad news to share with you. Uh, sad for me, uh, mostly for me. Um, something happened of importance that will affect my life, my family life especially, um, and I don't want you to have any uh, suspicions about anything else, so I'll tell you in great lines what it is, is that I own uh, cottages and beach houses to rent and that's our living <clears throat> doing that forever and uh, therefore we have a grandfather cause based on the civil code of Quebec um, California is on the civil code same thing but most of the other provinces in Canada and all most of the states in the United States are on the common law it doesn't matter they're very similar but well they're not similar but it doesn't matter um, the point is since 19 the 1940s mid 1940s um, uh, my, our domain has been for rental of cottages and we've never stopped that we've never changed the the uh, the use of um, of our cottages uh, they were for rent uh, but the municipality all of a sudden just informed us that oh we can't uh, rent more than one cottage uh, sorry that's a new bylaw well it doesn't affect us the problem is they're in they're imposing it on us so this means that my lifestyle my lifehood is in danger and I have to stop or curtail substantially allow all of my well most of many of my activities for the Lord for now and this may take months even years you know how the court system works and we have to prove that we've been renting those cottages since the 1940s now in 1940s people of 50 60 70 years old are no longer alive fortunately we know some of their children so they will be able to witness that um, We've always rented our cottages and we have a grandfather clause and therefore that new bylaw does not apply to us. All this to say that I will not be able to continue my work here with dear Robert Gauthier. Um, and it's extremely sad for me, it truly is. This was my favorite activity for the Lord. Uh, and not just that, but it's of great importance. I believe that Bible prophecy must be known by all. Anyhow, I don't want to make this long because you have the whole show in front of you. But it is one way, or it's the only way for me to say goodbye. I will no longer be your host on how to know Bible prophecy, but I can assure everyone that I will offer to Robert all my support. I'll mentor him so that he continue his wonderful ministry. Robert is by far one of, I mean, I don't know any better teacher to teach us Bible prophecy. So that's why I believe in his work. I want to support it. I'll be his greatest fan, but I will not be able to be occupied uh, in uh, hosting it and especially doing the editing and so on because it's too much work and I have to concentrate my work now in saving my family. Uh, I'm terribly sorry to announce that. I'm sorry to say goodbye, but I have no choice. So anyhow, God bless you. Thank you for being with us for the 10 first episodes. And may God bless Robert for the following episodes. And uh, I love you. Really sorry to say goodbye. On behalf of OKChrist.com, my name is Philippe Paquette. And be blessed all. Oh, yeah? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, look at me now. And what am I doing? You're pressing on a button. Yes, it's you're right. I'm not lighting a cigarette there. It's not a lighter. No. It, it's a it's a stopwatch. Oh yes. A stopwatch, you know? We'll go to like a stopwatch, you know. The first thing we'll know we'll need to find out is when do we start the 70 weeks of Daniel. That will be the stopwatch to start. Yes. And we'll explain that later. That's so wonderful. if you don't mind, uh if you don't mind, we'll go to uh, Daniel chapter nine. Yes, go ahead. While you do that, um, Daniel has one question in mind. Yes. What will happen to Jerusalem? What will happen to God's people, the Jews? Okay. That's, his, that's his main question. He, he wants to find out what will happen. And so, so Gabriel will come in. And Gabriel means the strong one of God. Okay, so Gabriel will, will go to Daniel and he will tell Daniel 
listen now, Daniel, there is 70 weeks. 70 weeks will happen before Israel is restored. Okay? And, and he will explain. So, okay, you got, can you, can yes. you read? Yeah. Yes, can you give me the verses? Uh, verse 24 to 27, whatever you want to read there, we'll, we'll go okay. by verses afterwards. Verse by verse, excellent. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, correct? Yes. Okay. Seventy weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. Okay, we'll stop there. That's yes, good sir. with me. Okay, 70 weeks are, are divided, are apportioned. Uh, what's the word you read in your, in your translation? 70 weeks are? Has been decreed for your people. Okay, so there's a decree of, there's a decree of 70 weeks. Okay? That's correct. And that's what we'll be zooming on, these 70 weeks. Now, these 70 weeks are regarding what? Thy people and the holy city. Yes. So it's, it's regarding to the Jews and it's regarding to Jerusalem. Of course. So 70 weeks are put aside, as it were, to, to conclude, to, to explain everything. Okay? And now it says there, it says six things. Um, I'll, I'll read them to you again. Transgressions? To close the transgression, one, yes. Go ahead. A end of sin? Two. End of, to make an end of sin? Oh, okay, make expiation for iniquity. Okay, that's three. That's, right. uh, that's actually, that's the second one. The third one, to make atonement for iniquity. Okay, yes. Okay. Next one. one. The fourth one is to bring in everlasting righteousness. Yes. Fifth one. To seal up vision of the pro okay, and the last one to anoint the most holy place. I'll, I'll sum it up in two words: full blessing. Seventy weeks is apportioned or divided so that the city and the people will enter into full blessing. Okay, so they will, we will, we will require these 70 weeks so that all these six things will happen. Now, as Christians, we enter into the benefit of it right now. Forgiveness of sin, righteousness, and so forth. We all know That's this. Right. As yeah. Christians, we all, this has been done for us as, as Christians in a way. But now we're talking about the earthly people. We're talking about Jerusalem. And... In order for them to enter into these six things, which is the full blessing, there will be a lapse or a period of 70 weeks. Okay? Make sense? So seven, yes. Now, that's the, is that the end of the 70 weeks, Robert? At the end of the 70 weeks, the full blessing will be there because at the end of the 70 week, Messiah will be with them. They will be restored. The second okay? coming. The second coming in glory, not for his church, when he comes with his church in glory. Correct. Okay. Excellent. Now, in verse 25, Now therefore, and understand, from the going forth of the word to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah, So we have the starting, we, we, we take our stopwatch, and where do we start? Where do we start counting? From the going forth of the word to restore and build Jerusalem. When the word went out, go and build the city, go and build Jerusalem, this is when our stopwatch starts. Okay? Now, where do we get that? Where do we get the starting point? We have to go now to uh, Ezra and Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1. In the month of Nisan, in the 12th year of King Artax, sorry, Artax Xerxes, 
when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not seen, I had, I had not been sad in the presence, in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I, will very much, I, I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Now that's important, the city. You see, he's mentioning the city. Okay. And then he ends in verse 5, that I may build it. Okay, so Nehemiah is seeking the permission to go back and build the city. Okay, now this happened on the 20th year of Arta Exiles, which is uh, chapter 2, verse 1, the 20th year of Arta Exiles. Now there were, there were two edicts by this king. Okay, one is in, is in Nehemiah. No, one is in Ezra, and one is in his ear. In Ezra, it is, uh, where is it found in Ezra? Um, chapter 7, verse 7. Yes, Ezra. Ezra 7, verse uh, Okay, Ezra, that, that? yeah, Ezra 7, verse 7. Some verse of seven. the Israelites, including priests, Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, and temple servants, also came up to Jerusalem in the 70th, 70th year of King Artaxerxes. Okay, so here, here it is, the 7th seventh, seventh year of Artaxerxes, okay? So I'm sorry, that, yeah, I, I said 70th, but it is 7th. 7th. So the 7th year of, of his reign, he made uh, an edict. It was to go and work around the sanctuary, around the temple, okay? But he does another one, which we saw in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1. Now we are the 20th year, okay? He, so on the 20th year, it is regarding now the city, to build the city, not the temple. In Ezra, we have the building of the temple. But the prophet is instructed to put his top watch the moment they start building not the temple but the moment they start building the city from the going forth of the word to restore and to build jerusalem unto messiah the prince are 70 weeks and 62 weeks so we we can start counting on the 20th year of, of the king Arta Exiles. Now, uh, Robert, I just want to be clear. We can start counting the the what? We can start counting the seventy weeks. the The moment we we need to count seventy weeks somewhere. Indeed. So, indeed. So so the scripture tells us we will start counting once from the going forth of the word to restore and to build Jerusalem. The moment they started to build Jerusalem, and this came under the edict of this king, then we can start counting from them, from that moment on. So, so that's fact, where we... Yeah, in fact, what you're saying, from Daniel 9, verse 24, 70 weeks have been decreed, or have been divided, or have been put apart, and so on. This is the beginning of the 70 weeks of Daniel. This is the beginning in Naomi chapter 2, verse 1, is the beginning. Now, I think, Phil, we need to speak a little bit about the 70 weeks. Indeed. Um, what, what does that mean, okay? Now, in the last uh, episode, we mentioned that um, the, the, the Jews are very fond of the number seven. Seven days of creation, seven feasts of Jehovah, uh, and so forth. There's a lot of, so they are very fond of seven. Okay, and it's called Iptad. Okay, Iptad means a group of seven. Okay, so 70 Iptads, so 70 times a group of seven, which is 990. Now, they are, they are not days, they are years. So, 490 years 
70 weeks, 70 heptad weeks are put aside, okay, for the rebuilding of the city of Jerusalem. Now, in, in there's another word for that, hebdo. Uh, in French, we have a hebdomadaire every week. Uh, we have a newspaper that's called the hebdo, which comes out every week. Well, heptad and hebdo, hebdomad would mean seven, a week, uh, a number seven. Okay, so just to illustrate that, when we go to uh, uh, Jacob, when Jacob went to Laban to get a wife, he, he loved very much Rachel, he saw she was beautiful, and he wanted Rachel, and uh, Laban told, if you want, if you want Rachel, my friend, you'll have to work for me, and he asked him how long, oh, one week will do. Well, by one week, he meant seven years. So the seven years went by, and overnight, instead of getting Rachel, he got Leah. And Jacob was not happy. He said, listen, I work one week for Rachel. And Laban said, well, in our family, we don't give the, the youngest girl. We, we give the older girl, so you get Leah. So he said, you'll have to work another week, seven years. And then he got Rachel. So now he has over 14 years, he has Leah, he has Rachel, but he doesn't have any cattle. And so Laban says, very simple, work another week, my friend. <laughs> another seven years, 21 years he spent, okay? So when we talk about 70 weeks, we mean 70 heptads, 70 times 7, which is 490 years. That's interesting. It's, it's you know, I... I I would. I don't think I'd like Laban. By the way, <laughs> I don't think he'd be my friend. I, I don't think so. Hey, but he's, he would be my my father-in-law. So I would, I, would have to, I would have to find ways to love him. Um, it's interesting because I'm looking at Daniel nine twenty-five too. It's it's it's. it's uh, go ahead, Robert. Uh, no, I was going to say Laban. Uh, Jacob says he has changed my wages so many times. So you know, Laban would would change his wages all the time, you know, all the time, poor. Well, anyways, Jacob, he liked to abuse of people himself, so now he got abused, you know, in a certain way. Yes. But the, oh, well. the reason I'm saying that is that, um, by the way, I spoke at my, my daughter's uh, wedding, and I read this portion about this seven weeks. And when it, so he had worked 14 years for, uh, for, for Rachel. Rachel. Yeah. And it is said it was counted to him as little, oh, nice. as a little lapse of time. You know, that's very it. beautiful. So I told my I told my daughter and my son-in-law. I hope at the end of your life you will be able to say, "This went fast. This was very short." You know, indeed. So, anyways, yeah. So, anyways, the thing is, one week means a week means seven years. 70 times 7, 490 years. So the stopwatch starts when? When it is decreed to build the city. Not when it's decreed. The first degree was to build the temple. We don't count that. We own scripture says, so the building of the city from the going forth of the word to restore and build Jerusalem. That's where we put the stop. So the moment they started that, we, the stopwatch is on now. Okay. Very, very excellent, excellent. You got that, Phil? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, okay good. Should, should I read Daniel 9 now? Um, yeah, First. you might now read from 25 there. Okay, 25. Read, Daniel, read, read till the end. We'll get a till the end? Yeah, might okay. as well. And then sure. we'll go verse by verse. Okay, Daniel 9, uh, starting at uh, chapter 9, verse 25. Uh, so you are to know that and discern that from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah, the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Okay, well, we can, uh, we can. Okay, we can, we can stop there, it's up to you. Yeah, we can stop there, yeah. So okay. from the moment they started to build the city and the streets, we start to count. Now it is said, um, 
on to Messiah, the Prince, they are seven weeks and 62 weeks. Seven weeks. You know, it, it says 70 weeks are apportioned or are divided. So this is how it goes. Seven weeks, first portion. Second portion, 62 weeks. For a total of? 69 weeks. Right. And there's one still one, one week, which brings us to 70 weeks, which brings us to 490. Now, if we count, seven weeks is seven times seven, which is 49 years. 62 times seven is 435 years. And this brings up to 483. When you count them up, 483, there's missing seven years. The last week is not there yet. You got that? And that is that is, that is the week that we find in Revelation. That's the week we find in Revelation. Yes, it is. So, so s seven weeks, okay? Seven weeks was used to build the street and the malt shall be built again. That's when they, it took them 49 years to build the city. 49 years, seven weeks. In 49 years, the city was considered to be built. Uh, the Jews had their streets, they had their, their own constitution, if you want to call it. The, we call that the Jewish polity. They, 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 have, they have an entity because they had a city now. After 49 years, they had that. But scripture says we must add we must apportion another 62, 62 weeks, okay? On, okay? Seven weeks and 62 weeks. So these 62 weeks are 62 times 7, 434. This is the period. Now, the city was built in the, in the, in the seven weeks. Now we have another portion. It's time of, it says of perilous times, times of troubles. That's where we get the king of the north, the king of the south. They come in and they make incursions into Israel. So this lasted 434 years. Okay. And then after all these perilous and troublous time, then came Messiah. Okay. Un and under the Roman time. rule. Under the Roman rule, Messiah came, okay? And that's Daniel and, 9, 26, right? That's Daniel 9, 26. Do you want me to read that? And after 62 weeks, okay, go ahead. Daniel 9, verse 26. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. Okay. And the, so okay, so what actually is saying is that seven weeks plus 62 weeks, we get 69, we get 483 years, Messiah is cut off. You know, it's 7 plus 62 that gives us 69. And that at the 69th week, Messiah shall be cut off. You get that, Phil? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the Lord came, uh, the Lord came, at 483 years, okay, after after the degree to start building, after the degree to start building the city, 483 years passed, and Messiah was in the midst of Israel. He came in and he sat on a donkey. You remember, he sat on a donkey. The king was in their midst, okay? Absolutely, yeah, in Jerusalem. But in Jerusalem, yes. But unfortunately, it is said here, he was... He was cut off, eh? Messiah shall be cut off. What's your translation? Messiah will be cut off. Cut off. And have this means he will die. He will not take his heritage. He will not take Jerusalem. He will not oh. take Israel. He will not be king over them. He's cut off. From and, 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 and and my verse says and have nothing. And have nothing. He had nothing also. That's right. This this is what happened. Okay. So on on the on the 69th year. He was cut off. He had nothing. Okay. Well, we know that because the cross came in, and he was he was completely rejected. Now you want to read the rest, verse twenty-six. Now, 
Indeed. Uh, let me read the whole thing, so it'll be uh, complete. Okay. Go ahead. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah, we're, we're reading Daniel 9, 26, that the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be war. Desolation are determined. Okay. So we had our stopwatch to start when the city was being rebuilt. Okay. Um, Nehemiah 7, chapter 2. The, the edict to go and build the city. So stopwatch starts there. And now the stopwatch ran and ran and ran until we got to the 69th week. And then Messiah was cut. Stop the clock. Right. Put the stopwatch on off. Off today, Phil. The prophetic ev events have stopped at the cross. And they will only, only start back when the church is taken away. It is now the era of the church. Jews and Gentiles, slave and bondmen and so forth can all come to the Lord Jesus. They have eternal life. They are a heavenly company. And this is the period that has been going on since the day that the stopwatch was stopped. Messiah was cut off. And this stopwatch won't be going back on until the church is raptured and the saints are gone to be with the Lord in the Father's house. Once this happens, put back, put back your clock watch on, your, your stopwatch on, and you have one week left. You have seven years left for the full blessing. You remember the full blessing we talked about? There, there is one week left for the full blessing to happen to Israel and to Jerusalem. And of course, this uh, will happen at the end of that seven years, at, or at the end of Revelation. So yes. we could then, in essence, say that after the 69th week, after the Messiah is cut off, and as the Messiah, he gets nothing, he's rejected, and so on. Um, it seems that in God's annals, or in God's time-wise, uh, during 2,000 plus years, it's like a parenthesis in yes. time. The spouse of Christ. Yes. Once it, she goes, then the seven years continues, and it completes the seventieth uh, week of Daniel. It is, like you say, it's a parenthesis that has lasted for over two thousand years, the period of grace. Okay. But there is a longer parenthesis, Phil. The parenthesis of Lo Ami not my people that started when the temple was destroyed so that's way ahead of that so that parenthesis of israel not being the people of god is still lasting today so it's more than 2000 plus maybe seven eight hundred years right. so we have two parentheses the one where the people is low am i I mean, yeah. and, and, and the one we have now, the, the church that started at the cross and will end at the rapture, at the coming of Christ for his church. Okay. That's interesting. Amazing. Interesting, eh? So now we go to verse, the middle of verse 26. After it says, Messiah will have nothing. Just read that phrase there. The people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay, and it's, you there. Okay. Okay. The people... Of the prince of the prince that shall come, come, who is to come, that shall come, yeah, shall we'll destroy, destroy the city. So, what city are we sanctuary. talking about? Jerusalem, Jerusalem for sure. Now, who destroyed the city of Jerusalem in 70 AD? Nero, Romans, yeah, the Romans under Titus, the Romans Titus, under I'm sorry. Titus, of course, Nero was before Titus, yeah. the. Under Titus, Jerusalem was destroyed. Now it is said here, it is not said that the prince will destroy Jerusalem. It is said the people of the prince that shall come. The people, the right. people, the people, the Roman people 
destroyed Jerusalem. But there is a coming prince. The prince shall come. That's, That's our right. future. That's our future. There's a coming prince. There is a coming Roman Empire. A, 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 a prince, an emperor to come. Okay? And he will be very, very, very wicked. But here, we have to make the distinction, and this is where we need to distinguish that which differ. We must distinguish between the people that destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD and the prince that shall come. Now, the, the prince, prince that shall come, come, we're not talking about the Lord. No, we're talking, we're talking about, about the Roman prince. Correct. We're talking about a Roman individual that will come. And will control the world will control europe like europe was once controlled by the roman empire well this prince there will be a coming prince you see phil babylon was destroyed by the persians and the medes the medes and the persians were destroyed by the greeks and the greeks were destroyed by the romans but nobody destroyed the roman the Romans were never defeated. They just they collapsed. Faded they, they just faded, faded away. away. They just collapsed, you know. And out of this collapse came Europe. Uh, right. Came Everybody became independent. France, uh, Spain, uh, Italy, uh, you name them all. They, they all separated themselves. But yeah. they will all one day be reunited. We have two minutes left. <clears throat> okay, they will one day be reunited under what we call the revived Roman Empire. And the one leading that will be this prince here. It's not the Antichrist. People say that the Antichrist will be leading the Roman Empire. No, the Antichrist is not there. It's the coming prince, the prince to come, that will be the leader, not the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a religious person. He, but here we have a political person. Are we talking about that on our next show? Sure, we'll keep. We'll go. Okay. We'll probably go to uh, Revelation 13 and so forth. Excellent. So we're really talking about the false prophet here. Yeah, we'll be talking about the false prophet who is, but here, remember, here it's the prince to come, the Roman prince to come. Oh yes, the Roman Empire. No, okay. There is no antichrist here at all. No Excellent. antichrist. And we'll go to Daniel 7, and we'll compare Daniel 7 with Daniel 8, and we'll go to uh, Revelation 13, and we'll get a get a picture so stop watch as yes. started again no not yet <laughs> oh, yeah, it will only right. start <laughs> it's now that's stop right. when the when messiah was cut off it stopped that's so, right yeah. so now we're just waiting we're just waiting that's right it starts again at the rapture um yeah. we have uh, 30 seconds left uh, robert uh, we still have uh, daniel 9 27 uh should we take that later or do you want to comment on well, that um, i could read it Well, we'll I, I might have a few words to say longer than 20 seconds. <laughs> okay, let's do <laughs> so we'll that. Start, we'll start from there. Yes, we'll start from uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. I'm really sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I would, I would love to, to stay uh, and, and listen to what Robert has to and, say. And, we, have, uh, we have to go. <laughs> and he will. I just want to say that, Phil. And he will. He shall confirm a covenant. The he here is the prince. Of course. The, the he is the prince to come, not the Antichrist. Anyways, we'll get to that. You, you're talking about the Roman prince here. Yeah, the Roman prince, yeah. He Absolutely. will confirm. He will confirm. He will confirm an agreement with the Jews. And who will represent the Jews? The Antichrist is there. Yes. Quite so interesting. He, okay, Ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we said enough. Goodbye. <laughs> we say, yeah, well, we could say so much, but we have to go. It's uh, past our time. So, Robert, thank you again for this week. You're a wonderful person. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, have a great week, and we'll see you very, very shortly. And uh, this is becoming very exciting because we are now in the very heart of Bible prophecy. We love you, and see you soon.